Psalm 139, verse 23. And I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation, so follow along with whatever you have. And it reads, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. So far, the reading of the scriptures. Tonight, we're going to talk about the reality of intimacy. My goal in tonight's message is to revisit all the messages that we've had so far on intimacy, so that if you've not heard any other, or if this is the only message that you hear on intimacy, that you get a full picture and a full understanding of what God has been saying in this season and what he's going to continue to say. Intimacy is a closeness um, and of an observation, a, a deeper knowledge of a person or a subject or a thing. Um, what God has really been saying in the season of intimacy is that I want to know you, and I want you to know me. I want you to know me fully and completely and inside and outside, and it, it translates both ways. He wants us to say the same to him. God, I want you to know me. I want you to know all of me. I want you to know the depths of me, the ins and outs of me, the good, the bad. I want you to know me. And that is the intimacy that God is craving, and that is he's calling for in this season. We've been talking about intimacy from so many different perspectives, drawing closer to God and falling more in love with him. Um, we've talked about intimacy from the standpoint of being intimate in our worship and opening ourselves up. Um, we've talked about removing masks and being real with ourselves, real with God, real with the people around us. We've talked about, again, intimacy with people, drawing closer to the people that we have in our lives, the people that we have in our circle, and the people that God is bringing to us. God wants intimacy with his people, and it's not just to have a thriving relationship. He wants us to, he wants to be able to develop us. A lot of times we've stopped at intimacy with, oh, I just want to be closer to God. I want to know him and be deeper with him, but we don't realize that in that intimacy, God is doing something. He's developing us on the inside. He's renovating and doing things in us. He's making us more like him. And that's what this season of intimacy is about. We cannot accomplish this level of intimacy just one way. Intimacy is with God and with people. Pastor Sean talks all the time about how the cross is vertical and horizontal. Because intimacy requires both ways, you cannot neglect one for the other. You cannot have a good relationship with God and a bad relationship with your brothers and sisters, a closed relationship with your brothers and sisters. We talked about in women's ministry, and I thought this was phenomenal, about how we are trying to be intimate with one another in glass boxes. We can see what's going on in each other's lives, but we are not close enough to touch. We're not close enough to be able to be in in and out of each other's life to sharpen each other. So that's, a, that's what God is trying to break, break us out. God uses people to accomplish the things that he wants to in the earth. Anytime you look through the Bible, he's used people. He used people, um, when Jesus was a person, he used people um, to spread the message of the gospel. So in this season of intimacy, he's using people to develop intimacy. I can say for certain um, that this season of intimacy has been tough. Uh, it's been really, when you have to look at yourself for who you are and for who God is showing you, the good, the bad, and the ugly, that's hard. It's hard to see the things in yourself that you don't like, 
the things that you have hidden for so long, the things that have been undercovered or the things that you've swept over and put underneath, un under a rug, like your bad attitude, the way that you respond to people when they push your buttons, the way that you handle money, the way that you handle your household, everything that doesn't line up with who God wants us to be, those are the things that he's shining light on. He's shining light on our hurts, our fears, our depression, those things that we pretend that don't happen. We pretend that it, it's just nothing because it, that doesn't fit the church facade. That doesn't fit who I, who I, my position in church. It doesn't fit who I think I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to be, what God said about me it doesn't fit so we hide it and we pretend like it's not there but this season of intimacy and us drawing closer to God he's snatching the covers back off of that yeah. it's almost like when you do a deep cleaning in your house you go in let's say you go into your closet and you start pulling stuff out you pull out this blouse you pull out these shoes you pull out those pants you pull out this belt and if you ever, if you're not really organized, you kind of look around and you got mess everywhere. You just got stuff, just stuff, just stuff, just stuff. But what you're actually doing is beneficial. You're trying to do something good, but in the midst of it, it looks bad. It looks messy. It looks ugly. It looks dirty. But that's what God is doing in this season. He's pulling out, yanking the covers off. Let, let me have that. Let me have that bad attitude. Let, let me have that depression. L let me have that response. Let me, let me have that. G give me this. Give me that. He's pulling those things out so that way he can go in and rearrange us yeah. and clean us out yeah. and make us more like him. Yeah. It sounded like a good thing when we first started this intimacy. Oh, God. I want to love you. I want to know you. I want to be close to you. I want to smell like you. I want to take you in. I want to taste you. But really, it's deeper than that. It's so much weightier than that. When we are praying for intimacy, we're praying, let me get closer to the light. Draw me a little bit closer to the light. A little bit closer. A little bit deeper. And when you get closer to a light, it exposes more. It exposes a little bit more, a little bit more. You ever look under your bed? You, you put the light under there? From, the, from back here, you, everything looks good. Yeah. When I look under my bed, it doesn't look messy. Yeah. But I, I, I shine that flashlight under there. Oh, it's a sock under there. Oh, it's a, it's a remote under there. Oh, there's an empty water bottle under there. God is looking. Oh. I don't, I, I don't like the way that you treat people. Uh, nope, mm -mm. you're not handling your money right. Uh, nope, your attitude at work isn't correct. Uh, you got road rage, you didn't handle that. Oh, you thought that you dealt with this person? You did not. God is shining and he's showing those things. And that's, it's, it's hard to deal with. It's, it's uncomfortable to deal with. It, it makes, it makes you kind of cringe a little bit. Then that's because we know the fullness of who God is. We know how good and pure he is. And so when I look at me and I don't match up to that, ugh, it just kind of on the inside, it just makes you, it, it starts a turmoil on the inside. You begin to churn and you begin to just a little bit, it feels uneasy, but I want to come and I, God, he gave me this word to encourage you that he is doing something in us. He is doing something in each and every one of you. And as you draw closer to him in intimacy, he's beginning to shape and mold you. He says, don't run. He says, don't squirm. Sit under it. Let me do what I'm doing because in the end, you will be more like me. This is the reality of intimacy. I'm going to talk a little bit about diamonds. When God began to, I began to do my study, he started to show me, began to take me to study diamonds. And I, I was like, God, why? What does this have to do with anything? But as he began to show me, I began to see what he was doing. So just follow along with me and hear what he's saying. Diamonds are formed by lots of pressure, 
lots of heat, and very quickly. Diamonds are a hard material, virtually unbreakable. Diamonds have to be searched for. You can't just walk down the street and see a diamond. You have to search for diamonds. The deepest mine known is 3,500 feet into the earth. You've got to go deep to get the diamonds. Deep. Diamonds are cut by hand. They are meticulously picked and cut and inspected to find the best cut and clarity for, the, for a rough piece of diamond. Clarity refers to the inclusions on the inside of the diamond. Um, when you take a rough piece of, a rough diamond, when it's pressurized, depending on the amount of heat and the amount of pressure, there are certain things on the inside of diamond that impurities that um, help determine its value. When diamonds are looked over and cut, it's to bring the highest value or brilliance. A diamond that is higher in, cl in the clarity scale will be more brilliant because it doesn't have inclusions to impede its ability to reflect light. So what am I saying? I say all of that, what am I saying? God is processing us like diamonds. The reality of intimacy is that we are being cut on. We are being cut in order to have the least amount of inclusions. When they take a diamond, an expert will take it and they'll look at it and they'll find the piece that has the least amount of imperfections so that way it has the highest value. God is looking at our lives and he's cutting out the imperfections so we have the highest value. He wants us to be able to bring more people into the kingdom of God. But if we don't have, if we have things in us that are not like him, things that the world identifies as themselves, then we are the same as them. That's how they view us, as the same as them. I wouldn't want to be a Christian if there was no value to it. If it added no value to my life, what would be the point? The reality of intimacy is that it takes other people. Like I said, God does things in the earth through people. When you take a diamond, um, they, they take it and one person cuts it and they pass it along. Another person is skilled in a different way and they cut it in a different way and they pass it on to the next person. We've got people in our lives that see different things in us and God is using each person to point out put their finger on the things that he has, the things your friends might poke you in your attitude, your spouse might poke you in your vulnerability and your ability to trust them, your boss might poke you in the area of submission, your brothers and sister at church might poke you in your church hurt, your past hurts, the things that God is wanting to pull out, but we have to not run from people and we have to allow God to do what he's, he's doing. We asked him for this intimacy. We asked him for this. We prayed and we cried, God, give me more of you. And that's what he's doing. He's, he is beginning to show us more of him. And as we see more of him, we begin to see more of ourselves and more of the things that us that are not like him. And he's beginning to pull those out. Give me that. Give me that. Ah, it hurts. Give me that. He's using these people that we are bumping up against, rubbing against, iron sharpens iron because there's friction that it, it wouldn't sharpen if you got two smooth edges and everything was good. He wants us to stay with these people. He says, I, I, I keep hearing God say, stay with it. Draw closer to people. Stop hiding. Get deeper because you want to be more like me. Yes. You can't be more like me if you keep running from people. Yeah. People are my highest commodity. Not everybody is going to agree with you. Not everybody is going to like the things that you like. Not everybody is going to tickle your fancy or sing your praises or be, be all in your face. He says, stick with it. He says, stay with it because I'm doing something in you. I'm making you more like me. And these people that I have in your life in this season are for that purpose.
The reality of intimacy is that it's for the building of the kingdom. When diamonds are at their highest quality and their highest value, they reflect the greatest amount of light. The Bible tells us to let your light so shine. We reflect the light of, of Jesus Christ through us, just like diamonds reflect the natural light. We can't reflect the light of Jesus through us if our attitude isn't right. That doesn't look like Jesus. We can't reflect the light of Jesus if we don't want to give. That's not like Jesus. We can't reflect the light of Jesus if we are not going out and telling people about him. He talked about his father and his mission the whole time. So God is really challenging and pulling on those things so that way we can build up the kingdom of God. He wants us to bring people in. And if you have, I keep picking on an attitude, if you got a stank attitude and you're walking in a grocery store, nobody's going to want to talk to you. They're not going to want to hear what you have to say. You have the solution to their problem. When God began to reveal that to me, that I've got something that everybody is searching for. Everybody is searching for Jesus Christ. They may not know it. They may not get it. They may not see it. They might think that they're searching for something else. But I know the secret. I know the secret to their happiness. I know the secret to their peace. I know the secret to their joy. So since I know this, I want God to cut in me, cut on me, show me Reveal those things to me so that way I can be more like you and bring more people into the kingdom of God. The real reality of intimacy is that it gets ugly. It gets downright nasty. I want to go to our text and I want to talk about David. I love David. David is my favorite character in the Bible because David was human. He, I, I feel like I can relate to David more than anybody else in the Bible. David wasn't perfect, but David chased after God. David had his issues, but he didn't stop. He pursued God. He pursued God with every ounce of his being. He pursued God even when he was mad at God, when he was hurt by God, when he didn't understand God. David pursued, and that's because David understood the reality of intimacy. David had gotten something. He had gotten a revelation of this intimacy with God. He he understood that when he, he began to pray, search me, he understood that there was a cutting process. If you look earlier in the text in that same chapter, David even already says, you have searched me, you have known me. But he still invited God in. Even though God knows, he said, come in, search me, know me, cut me, try me, point out anything in me that's not like you. He said, make me more like you is basically what he was saying. He said, look, God. He said, look, I have an attitude problem. Look, God, I have a fear problem. Look, God, I don't trust you. Look, God, I I doubt your faithfulness. Look, God, look at all this in me that's not like you but here you can have it because I want to be more like you he said here God you can have it it's not worth me losing out on intimacy with you here God you can have it it's not worth it it's not worth it None of the things that we hold on to, the things that God is putting his finger on in this season, the things that he is calling forth and calling out of us in this season, none of it is worth holding on to. That we sing that song, Pursuit, and it says that you are worth the pursuit, but he's also worth the things in us that we hold on to. He's worth the things in us that we begin, that we, our security blankets, That's what they are. They are the things that we we find comfort in. He's worth all of that. He's worth giving it up. He's worth turning it over to him. He's worth worth just laying it bare and, and letting him shine a light on it and letting him consume it. We pray, God, consume me, but then we hold things back. How can he consume you if you are holding on to this piece? It's like when you play Uno and you got that draw four behind your back because you don't trust the people that you play with or you want to come out with this last piece. He said, no, put all your cards on the table. 
He said, put it all out there. Let me do with it what I'm going to do with it. The picture that you have of yourself doesn't compare to the image that I see you. He says that I am doing something in you and I am developing you, but I can't develop you if you don't invite me into your search. You don't invite me into this process. Nobody wants to hurt on themselves. Nobody will give themselves a shot. I'd prefer to have a nurse give me a shot because it hurts me. So God, come in. Come hurt me. Come hurt, hurt me real good. Come take this. Get it all out. That's what he wants from us. That's what this intimacy is calling for. It's not just the foo-foo, the pretty, the I'm going to sing God some more love songs. I'm going to lay on his chest and, let, and cry a million tears of intimate worship. And it's, it's deeper than that. It's, God, I want to be like you. God, I want to be like you. God, I want to be like you. I want to know you, and I want you to know me. I want you to know all of me, all of me, so that way you can have your way. God is the master surgeon. He, he, if you ever go to a doctor, they diagnose and they treat. They don't ask you to treat when they diagnose it. They, they point out that this is wrong with your knee. Let me do that. This is wrong with your heart. Let me do that. This is wrong with your brain. Let me cut on that. God is a master surgeon. He can diagnose and he can treat, but he will not treat unless you allow him to do it. He will not treat unless you invite him in. Jesus died for us to have this level of intimacy. This is what Jesus died for. This is one of the things that he gave us. And I refuse, I refuse to not get everything that Jesus died in my place for. He, Shavana was worshiping earlier and it just hit me again. I mean, it's one of those things that you know, but when you hear it again, that he died in my place. He died for me. He took all the lashes and all the whips and all of everything from me so that I can have the benefits. I can have the benefits of intimacy. I can have the benefits of being more like him. I can have the benefits of being able to draw people into the kingdom of God so that they can see Christ in me. They can see God developed in me. I want all of that. So God, I give it to you. I am, I am inviting you in. The reality of intimacy is a true awareness of who you are and where you are and what God is doing in you. It's a reconciliation between who he wants us to be and where we are now. He's, he's, he's beginning to balance the books. He's beginning to pull things off the scale so that way things match. He's beginning to add to us value. He's adding value to us. He wants us to be more like him. He wants us to be valuable. He wants us to be a light in the dark places. He wants that his light to shine through us so that when the world see us, they are drawn to us. They're drawn to the sparkle and the glimmer and the shimmer of the Christ in us. <laughs> They're drawn to the, the love that we have for one another. They're drawn to the love that we have for them. Unconditional love, the, for no reason at all. I don't have to know you to love you. Christ loved us before he knew us. The reality of intimacy is that it hurts. The reality of intimacy is that it gets ugly. The reality of intimacy is that it takes other people but the reality of intimacy is that it's worth it. It is worth everything that God is asking you to give up. Amen. Mm -hmm.